Would you like me to give the direct quote? Yeah. Um, please excuse my language. This is a direct quote, but Chrissy Teigen referred to Donald Trump as a ass bitch. Okay. Free speech. <laughs> This hearing by Republicans to cry about how they're such victims of social media platforms is not going so well for them. It no. just isn't. Because it turns out that after all we heard about the Twitter files, all we heard about the Biden campaign trying to censor tweets on Twitter, it turns out, oh wow, um, Trump, when he was president, meaning government official, executive branch, he tried to get stuff taken down from Twitter that mm -hmm. hurt his feelings, including the tweet from Chrissy Teigen. <laughs> LOL, what a P word ass bitch, tagged everyone but me, an honor, Mr. President. She called him Mr. President, she's being That's, polite. I mean, very respectful. Come on. So apparently that offended him enough to get his team to try to get that tweet taken down. I mean, look, if you want to take down all the tweets of people calling you a PSB, you're going to need to hire some more people. That's a jobs creation program I can get behind because <laughs> it's common and it's not restricted to Chrissy Teigen. So apparently when this happened, it was from 2019, John Legend, Chrissy Teigen's husband, got into some sort of Twitter beef with Trump and that led to the Chrissy Teigen tweet. I just, can we just, can everyone just stop? Stop what? Calling him a PSB? No, no, no. Because I won't. Guys. You can't make me. I, can you imagine being that powerful? To take down a tweet like that? To like, to care and be like, mm, mm. Oh, you mean be that powerful and yet so wany and weak? People no, are, I can't imagine that People are gonna say actually. mean things about you, right? Yeah, just I have it. been and will continue to in this very segment. Yes. Take us down, take us down. So, the, so the woman that we heard from is a former Twitter employee, right? So this hearing um, brought in uh, some Twitter employees, including Anika Nav Navarolis. Uh, that is the woman that we heard from. Um, we should hear a little more from her testimony. Let's watch. According to notes from a conversation with you, Ms. Navarolis' counsel, your counsel, the White House almost immediately thereafter contacted Twitter to demand the tweet be taken down. Is that accurate? In my role, I was not responsible for receiving any sort of request from the government. However, what I was privy to was my supervisors letting us know that we had received something along those lines or something of a request. In that particular instance, I do remember hearing that we had received a request from the White House to make sure that we evaluated this tweet and that they wanted it to come down because it was a derogatory statement uh, uh, directed whoa, whoa, towards whoa, the president. They wanted it to come down, they made that request. To my recollection, yes. I thought that was an inappropriate action by a government official, let alone the White House. But it wasn't Joe Biden about his son's laptop. It was Donald Trump because he didn't like what Chrissy Teigen had to say about him. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. My, my, my. My, my, my. Mm. And uh, by the way, I, I shouldn't. My, my, my minimize what her role was at Twitter, she was a Twitter executive. Sure. Um, so again, Republicans brought her on along with other you know, former employees of Twitter, mm -hmm. specifically to make their case that they're such victims of uh, the previously censorious Twitter platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, it turns out that when it comes to free speech, everyone's full of crap, mm -hmm. everyone, okay? Everyone from every party, tries to censor speech in some way when they get offended. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it is what it is, it's the truth. I've never seen Bernie do it. Well, that's true, but Bernie's but, very lovable. So look, it's obviously hilarious that he wanted to take this down. It is funny and so on that shallow level, I can enjoy it. But you know, we do have to acknowledge that there are differences. Obviously, these are, are not there? the exact same thing. So they came in wanting to focus on Biden doing this and as you point out, uh, they think that the Biden campaign did some of this and now it appears Trump did. So you're right, when it comes to a generalized lower F, lower S free speech, there is some similarity there. When it comes to the First Amendment, these are very different things because Joe Biden was a private citizen and he was the sitting president of the United States. That's so true. if there's any there there, it's there, what you just saw. It's the actual government doing it. And it's so weird that after months of journalists having access to all these Twitter files, that they didn't come across this. Mm. 
They were, I guess, so busy finding private citizens requesting things get taken down without any of the power of the government behind it or anything like that. And it's weird because not only did you have the very serious journalist, but you had the CEO himself, a man who at his core is just a commitment to free speech and lack and opposition to censorship, giving them access. It's so weird that it took this long to find out about it. I think this is the most important issue in the country. Um, you know, sometimes I do feel a little bit of concern about the tens of millions of Americans who don't have health care and mm -hmm. often will go bankrupt when they need medical treatment. But I mean, that really pales in comparison to the incredibly critical issue at hand here, which is a platform that really has no Im impact on your life if you decide not to be on it. <laughs> Sure, in a general a sense, yes. This is all just a massive elite circle jerk. That's all this is, right? Like, I, I want to make sure I'm not being shadow banned. I mean, I'm not doing anything to legislate or govern this country. I don't care about any of that. But me, 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 me. Am I being censored? Me, 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 me. That's all that it is all day long. That's why I'm so bored with my job. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm bored with my job. Because all day long, Everyone's constantly talking about the hurt feelings of the elites in this country. Mm -hmm. I don't care about your hurt feelings, okay? Twitter is not the most important platform of all time. It's not, I don't yeah. find it important at all, okay? I, yeah, I, I get the general idea. My issue isn't about the fifis of the elites, I, I really don't care about them. It's that this is actually the government using its power to shut down voices. And sure, the voice that it might be shutting down briefly could be Chrissy Teigen, and maybe we don't care too much about that. That was a funny tweet, she's had her missteps or whatever. Um, but if Trump gets back into office and now he has an even more friendly executive in charge of Twitter, uh, I don't think they're just gonna be coming for the Chrissy Teigens. They're gonna be coming for progressive candidates, people who advocate for a wealth tax, labor organizers, those sorts of things. And again, regular people debating or a company debating these things might be fine. The protection we're supposed to have is against the government right. mandating this sort of censorship. And that is constantly lost on the people who dominate the conversation about free speech. But we finally have a case in which it is actually the government and I guarantee they're not gonna have anything to say about this. Of Glenn Greenwald not. is not gonna be freaking out about this. Dave Rubin's gonna suddenly have something else to do. So weird that when it's the actual government doing the censorship, then they're gonna be real quiet all of a sudden. They're not gonna write any books about that. Are you saying that Glenn Greenwald is not an honest actor? I, I couldn't tell you, I don't watch his stuff. My impression you, based on what I've heard actor. is that not necessarily. Yeah. Um, but close. anyway, I mean the movement at large, the, yeah. the the quote unquote free speech warriors who care about criticism John, and claim that that's censorship, but don't care about censorship. The government is currently banning books in schools in places like Florida, mm -hmm. for instance. Yeah, I, I, I don't hear that. a peep from these so-called free speech absolutists who take up all the freaking oxygen in the room with their like faux outrage over nonsense. Wait, what about the ones who focus explicitly on book banning? Like which ones? Like Dave Rubin, he must have oh, a problem right, with this, right? right. I mean, he made a whole book no, no, about no. it, the book he bans, wrote that book. No, book bans only matter when it impacts him. Or when he and desperately wants it to impact him, when he's desperately right. begging for people to ban his book and right. nobody cared. Right, 100%. Yeah. A um, few other things to note from this hearing. Um, at one point, uh, AOC was able to engage in a line of questioning with uh, Navaroli, and here's what happened. So, AOC asked her about the company's response to a 2019 Trump tweet where he called for AOC and three other Democratic Congresswomen of color to, quote, go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came. Okay. So, New York? Like, <laughs> Where does he think that they came from? So Navroli responded to that by saying that her team reviewed the tweet and found that it was in fact a violation of Twitter's policies against abuse of immigrants, which explicitly barred the phrase, go back to where you came from, okay? Mm -hmm. But guess what happened? Guess what Twitter did? They, uh, instead of, I don't know, taking down Trump's tweet, I guess, they changed the policy to accommodate Trump's tweet. So let me give you that exchange. Navroli said her assessment was overridden and AOC asked if the policy was changed a day or two later. She responded, yes, that trope, go back to where you came from, was removed from the content moderation guidance as an example. And AOC responded, so Twitter changed their own policy after the president violated it in order to essentially accommodate his tweet. And at that point, Navroli said yes. That's good.
That's that's good. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, the line of questioning is good. See, that's why I like like you know AOC in these meetings, and you know people like Raskin and Porter. They ask insightful questions. They've done the research to know what to ask about, and they reveal truth. Whereas Marjorie Green just barks at a person who has no idea what she's saying <laughs> because she's spouting off stuff that she read on 4chan. That is not the same thing, actually. Um, and again, like I've generally said for years. If Twitter wants to have or not have the phrase go back to your country on the list of banned phrases, that's up to them. They're a private company. The fact that they're removing it directly to protect an elite who has already shown that he's perfectly willing to pressure that company to change their policies, then that's not as good and potential users of Twitter going forward should bear that in mind. They should definitely bear that in mind. And uh, I haven't seen any of Marjorie Green's uh, participation in this hearing, but I have seen uh, what Lauren Boebert wanted to ask about. You wanna know what Lauren Boebert's concerned about? Lauren Boebert. Uh, was I shadow banned? No one cares, Lauren, let's move on. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.